are ready to do some myofascial cupping using our gliding cups with a mechanical pump for the upper back and cervical spine and shoulders. So for people who have chronic neck pain, uh, cervical spondylosis, uh, pinched nerves, the typical upper trapezius spasm or levator spasm from stressing out, this is a wonderful technique to loosen up the neck and upper back, particularly for upper traps and levator. So let's take a look here. We have the mechanical cupping tool, which is very nice, using a plastic cup. They have a little valve in the top of the cup for letting the air in and out. Attach the mechanical pump to the top of the cup, like so, and you're ready to go. Pumping sucks the air into the cup and also will distract the skin up into the cup, creating what looks like a nice little hamburger bun. So let's take a look here. If we just place the cup, well, we have some lung points here, or acupuncture points. As you do more pumping, you get a larger ball of skin. It's going to feel a lot of tension along the rim at the edge, and particularly on the inside. To release it, you could just sneak a finger in along the edge of the cup. But you can see how much blood flow you have already, just because we've used a lot of pumping suction action. So I don't recommend using a lot of pumping suction action right away. That was just for demonstration purposes. We'll match it on this side. Let's just do one pump. You could actually remove the gun. And you can start using some gliding cupping massage. How is the pressure for you? Good. So you could get into the lower trap, work your way up, upper trap. When you go over the side of the upper trap, the air tends to come into the side of the cup. So no worries, just reposition your cupping gun. Sometimes it's hard to pull on or off, so if you screw it and unscrew it, it works much more easily. Little tip for getting it going. Position where you want the cup. Start on a flat surface. You get a much better grip. I'm going to do like one and a half pumps to get a little better purchase on the skin here. How is that pressure for you? Good. Now she's got some tightness right at that levator. You feel right here? Mm -hmm. Really pulls. So I'm going to just kind of stretch that out a bit. Now levator is coming from the posterior tubercles of the cervical spine and attaching to the superior medial border of the scapula here. And that's where most people get that knot that everybody complains about. It's deep to the upper trap, which is on the surface, so I can really work on getting both of those muscles addressed here. Now the cup's too big for her neck, right, where you see a little bit of a lordosis. So I'm going to switch from this medium-sized cup to a smaller rim. So I'll be able to get into those small spaces with a smaller cup. Again, fit it into the pump. Get a little bit of lube on the cup. See how much suction. I could even leave the suction gun attached. Because this way I could easily get my suction right back again. Or I could pump and release. Some people like a pump and release action. Instead of having too much on with a continuous suction, pumping and releasing. Now here I've got a really tight area right in that lordosis of the neck. So you can always pick up your suction again. It gives the skin a little relief to not have constant suction all the time. And I'm just going to follow up that trap levator. A little, need a little more suction effect. How is that working for you? Good. Feels very good. So everybody likes to get a little treat. Opposite side. So just glide with it. Feel where it feels tighter underneath your hand. You might want to spend a little more time there. Or areas that feel like they have more tension. Slow it down. And just let that gliding go through. See how high up you can get into the suboccipital area because that's an area also of great tension. Although the hair will tend to interfere a bit. Sometimes, again, I'll use an even smaller cup in that area where I'll kind of pump it like this, pumping and gliding so I can get some lift and still get into that area. Because that cervical lordosis is just really tight here. So keep that pump attached. 
You can adapt it as you go. How are you doing with that? Good. You'll be here all day. <laughs> She's moving in. <laughs> so the suction is nice. Be careful to avoid the area of the carotid sinus. So if you're going anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, you can then put some uh, irritation at the body's internal barometer. So you don't want to put the pressure over the carotid sinus there. Too much pressure there can cause a decrease in blood pressure, decrease in heart rate. So you definitely want to avoid that area. This, I don't use the cupping on the anterior aspect of the neck or the lateral aspect anywhere near the great vessels. We don't use it over pulses. And for someone who gets too much erythema, if they're not a fan of that erythema response, the pumping tends to create less of an erythema response because you don't have a continuous suction. So you can see the difference here if you do a little close up. Here's where we left the pump in place with greater pressure and you can see a little bit of a purple ecchymosis here. And here you just see some blood flow, a nice pink distribution over the whole area we work. Now these typically disappear in a couple of days. The pink erythema here will probably disappear in a matter of minutes to hours. But just as long as the patients know this is a normal expected reaction, there should not be any bullae there, there shouldn't be any blistering, bleeding, or interruption of the skin. It's just that at the surface there's a little tendency for the capillary breakage with the suction and you get a little bit of blood flow in that area, a little capillary bleeding, the superficial aspect of the skin. So it is not, not bad, we're not opening up the skin, we're not doing what we call wet cupping, which is when they actually do scratch the skin to suction out the blood for the purposes of bloodletting. Now that's, that's the old way, that's what they still use in many acupuncture and you know, other countries around the world, but here we're using these as a tool for massage and myofascial release to mobilize the tissue, increase the circulation, which is quite obvious as a result here, and help to improve functional mobility. What would we do after the cupping in this area? Well, we'd want to check, is there a change in functional mobility? Maybe we would do a neck disability index, pre and post, and see, did her perception of what she can do change? Remember too, you could use the silicone suction cups. I find they get a better grip and they're easier to handle than the suction guns. But if you want more specific pressure that's more modifiable, the suction gun's the way to go. So you could certainly do this. In an area where people have that forward head posture, you get that increased dowager's hump here. I like to get my suction cup right in that area and stretch. I could check the tissue clockwise, counterclockwise, see which way is tight. Most people I find an inferior glide is the most restricted. So I'm going to do a little stretch there. I might just counter stretch on the neck. I could even use two cups. Lube up the other cup a little bit. Get that on the back of the neck and now it's a wonderful way to get in and open up the lower cervical spine for that forward head posture. Cups release. Simply place it again and I could open up the neck this way or I could glide the cup coming down to the scapula, get into some of those rhomboids using the counter force of the cup that I have in my superior hand here. It's a wonderful way to get into some of those interscapular muscles and have a nice grip using the superior cup on the back of her neck. So think about the direction of the cups. I tend to follow the direction of the anatomy. If you remember your muscle fiber orientation, if you remember where your origins and assertions are, you could certainly get a much better idea of where to go with the cups. And squeeze to release. Once you've done some of the cupping, go back to some nice massage. Start to milk some of that fluid away. You get a nice increase in blood flow, lymphatic flow. And you want to especially start to bring that fluid back to the heart. Think the thoracic outlet anteriorly draining and releasing, relaxing that area. So it's a nice way to finish with the massage. And of course, I love to go ahead and do some myofascial stretch afterwards, a little cross hand stretch if needed. The tissue so nicely warmed up. 
You could do a little bit of scapula mobilization after working this. I'm just going to move your arm around here and let that be nice and relaxed. So now that we work the traps, it's warmed up. Not like just throwing a hot pack on. We did so much more with the mechanical aspect of our cupping, activating the mechanoreceptors in there, getting some of that pain inhibitory response, and then getting some scapula movement. I could get a little positional release now, feel where that upper trap is tight, levator, and do a little compression through the arm. So those of you familiar with positional release, shortening up the muscle for the relaxation effect, holding that, waiting for the release, really zones in on those trigger points. That should feel great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So patience, patience. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stay, sitting tight, no problem. <laughs> So you could do a lot more. I could then do a little stretch for an arm pull, a little myofascial arm pull. So if you see me down here with my hand, just to get some nice lengthening, stretching through the trap and levator. So I integrate quite a few techniques with the cupping from the myofascial release, positional release, a little bit more stretch. Come back at around that forward shoulder, forward head posture. So there's so much you can do in combination with the cupping. And then, of course, have her follow up with some functional activities, strengthening if necessary, your ergonomics, your sports retraining, so she learns how to avoid having this problem again. Let me mention just one other thing that's of critical importance, the breathing. These muscles up here that we're just working with the cups, these are accessory respiratory muscles, your upper trapezius, your scalenes, which we would stay posterior to the scalenes for the cups, uh, upper traps. Often you'll get elevated first rib because the scalenes are so tight. Feel the difference with how soft this is now mm -hmm. compared to here? Yeah. So we want equal time for that side, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but when people don't breathe well in their abdomen because the diaphragm's tight, the belly's tight, rib muscles are tight, your obliques, Okay, your intercostals, your lats, quadratus lumborum, any of those muscles being tight means you're not getting good breathing into the lower ribs. And when you can't get the good breaths in there, what are you doing? You're overusing these accessory respiratory muscles, your upper traps, your levator. Stress gets into those same muscles. So it's something to think about. This is a critical area to work. But you could do cupping and myofascial exercise from here to kingdom come. Unless you make sure that they're breathing appropriately, diaphragmatic breathing, they're going to go back to their habit of overusing this, and they'll be your patient forever. Which might be great for your business or not, but it's something to think about. Make sure to get them going into that mindfulness meditation, the breathing technique. You know, find out why they're not breathing well into the belly. Address the cause of where this tension came from. Don't just treat it with simple cupping. How, as wonderful as it is, make sure you follow through with what really matters for the patient. So thank you so much. Great.